So welcome once again to Quarantine TV. The whole purpose of this is to give you something to look at whilst you're pretending to work from home because we all know you've no trousers on and you're not doing anything at all. Uh, I'm delighted to welcome uh, one of the internet's most famous comedians, um, a guy who I, the first time I saw him was actually introduced to him by a Swedish person and he sent me this link and go, do you know, know this guy? Is he serious or whatever? And I just fell around the place laughing and it was to do with hurling. Uh, the man in question is Sir Steve O'Timothy. Steve-O, how are you? How are things? How are you keeping, Matt? Well, not too bad. You were telling me there you've been getting some emergency supplies there just before one of the most important outlets in Ireland closed for the lockdown. What did you get yourself there? I got myself two teas, just to make sure. <laughs> just to be on the same side. Well, uh, would they have come? I don't know what I'm going to do after this. Maybe just, you know, maybe stay in my shed for the rest of my life. I don't know. We'll figure out something. But That's it. We're, we're through the looking glass now. Could I ask you, because one of the things, we hadn't really interacted a whole lot on social media until the other day we were sort of chatting away. You'd done a thing about COVID-19 and that kind of thing. And you were saying that, you know, fear has brought out, you know, you're usually in character when you're on the internet. You know, you're, you're playing the character of Farmer Michael. But you were saying that fear yeah. brought out the real you. How are you feeling about the whole COVID-19 thing and going there? I don't know. Like... People are worried about it, and people in Ireland in general are worried about it, very worried about it. But, like, I have severe asthma as well, so I suppose it's kind of, it's it's an extra little uh, angle to the sort of Damocles dangling over my head. But I suppose, like, you just giving it to, like, my my dad or my brother or something like that than I am with myself. If I if I kick the bucket, well, then fuck it, so be it. I had a good life, you know what I mean? So <laughs> I'm very... Uh, What's the word? I'm very just... Sanguine you know. about the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The only thing I don't want to do is suffocate to death. That's that's a death that would... I No one would want, would they? Yeah, I don't think there's too many people going to choose that, you know. But have you found that it sort of has changed your life at all, Steve-O? Like, are you, have you stopped going out? I know you're still going out for a cup of tea or a cup of coffee in the morning, that kind of thing. But have you changed much of what you do because of this? I'm more aware of what I do, I suppose. I'm more... I suppose not not paranoid, but just hypersensitive about what I do, and I'd be thinking like, oh, I'm meeting up with a fella now in the car. Jeez, where was that fella now? Or you know, you know, you just you can't help thinking about it. And I suppose just for your own personal safety as well, you know. So as I said, you don't want to be bringing it home, or you don't you don't want to be the one that has to live with the fact that you killed your own father or something. Yeah, you know what I mean? that kind of way. Yeah, I was actually I was talking to Marion Keys, the writer, the other day, and I was telling her that uh, I had one job really yes. that was booked in this week, right? And that was uh, there's a fella from ABBA is opening a new hotel here in Sweden, and he'd asked me instead of having journalists there if I could go down and film the whole thing. And I was thinking if I have the virus and I kill the fella from ABBA, I'm never going to fucking live this down, you know? Yeah, so, yeah, but, finished. yeah but luckily that was cancelled, you know that kind of thing. But you're still working away you are in the most famous bmw on the internet right now so yourself and Sinead are still doing uh, videos every day and that kind of thing is the, a lot of the inspiration coming from this situation or are you just carrying on as normal uh some of them are carrying on some of them i suppose are just because of the like you have to you have to make fun of it i've always make, made fun of things that i hold dear mm. because otherwise you're just you're a selective you're selective in what you do mm. so like i mock like dementia that my mother died from I mock my disability that I nearly died from so you can't you know you have to be you have to be that way so if people are afraid about it people will laugh about it as well at the same time because they need a little bit of relief from it mm. tell us a little bit about the accident because um I actually didn't realize for a long long time that uh, you use crutches and you spend some time in a wheelchair because of a motorcycle accident could you tell me a little bit about that and could you specifically I'd like to know about when you realized how much your life was going to change because uh, you because of what you suffered in that accident uh, I was in 2005 uh basically lost control of a motorbike they're making a documentary about it as we speak so i can't really give too much away i suppose but uh <laughs> it's, it's going to be on tg cat as they call it tg cat tg cat we love it tg cat so uh yeah basically broke my neck and my back uh, i was paralyzed from the chest down just upper chest down for a while so yeah that was quite scary it was it was kind of i suppose i knew instantly that my life was going to be different hmm. i just i like i knew because i remember them talking in the hospital that i might lose the power in my hands and blah 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 and i remember saying to my dad that if i lose the power in my hands i want you to bring in tablets to the hospital because i'm i'm out yeah because if i'm left no if i'm left quadriplegic then i don't want in this world yeah like 
if my legs are gone, then I can deal with that. But if my hands are gone, I want out. So, and he was like, "We'll cross that bridge when we come to it." Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> so, yeah, I suppose we're we kind of like we're. My dad is a bit more serious, but me and my brothers and sister and things were a bit more like just make a joke out of things. I remember like when I was in the hospital centre, my dad, well, if I end up in a wheelchair, as long as I have nice mag wheels, I'll nice <laughs> be fine. So like, you have to pull it for something. That's the thing, you have to be stylish about it as well, you know? But, yeah, but, yeah. but when you got in, were you doing sort of comedy? Had you, you know, what were you working with at the time? Had you any ambitions to get into comedy or that kind of thing before the accident? Or was that just, did that just come around? I was always a typical Irish class clown. Like we're all comedians, aren't we? Everyone in Ireland, but, <laughs> I was more of the smart arse than anything else. So I always used to like uh, correct teachers and say things like, you know, yeah, well, that's like only if light was in a vacuum and things like that. And they'd be like, fucking you smart. You know I mean? <laughs> so I was, I was always a bit of a bollocks. Like, so, yeah, but I never really wanted to get into comedy. Like, and I would have never had the courage or the guts to do it. And like, like I always, I always watched stand up and I always had an interest in it. And I always kind of thought to myself, geez, it'd be cool to do that. But didn't know where to start. Right? And then, I suppose one day I just like met a video on my car with my brother and the rest is history you know it kind of blew up and it was like oh shit this is something happening here that's weird and odd so I just went with it and yeah. it's one of those things I went back to those early 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 videos that you did and I just had a quick look at them because you know it's always interesting to see how a character sort of develops over time and that you know but when when you started that when you sat in the in the car with your brother what was the goal? Was it just to have a bit of crack between him and you or maybe throw it out? A crack. Just a bit of crack. I was depressed and just wanted, I suppose, a, a creative outlet. Just, you know, it was, I, remember, I was like, I always used to do a kind of a, a, a kind of boggery accent and rapping along or singing along to whatever was a popular song of the day. So like I just said to my brother, record me there for the crack and I'll do the farmer. Martin was what, the first video. He was Martin. Yeah. So, uh, and as you as you would have seen from the very early ones, they were completely, utterly different. Michael is a hundred million st- times different. Like he's more very west of Ireland, and the, the voice is deeper, and you know he's completely stereotypical. And then I suppose it, like you don't even you don't even n- notice it changing. Yeah. Like, but I remember a few times when I'd be doing a video and I'd be like, Sinead, we we'll, we'll do this one about that, blah 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 blah, and then I'd have to stop her and I'd have to watch a YouTube video. To remind myself what Michael sounds like, because I I couldn't do Michael. <laughs> a lot of times that happened. Like I was the creator of the character, and I couldn't do. Him. I had to update myself on what what the characters are like. So it was odd, surreal. That's rude. And where did uh, Sinead come into all this? Because uh, she wasn't in, obviously in the first couple of videos, but she appeared then after a little while, and is now like Kathleen is probably you know behind the camera is just you know she's an iconic comedy figure yeah. in herself. You know. Yeah, yeah. Well, I suppose I like the early Michael or Martin was always talking about his wife Kathleen Kathleen at home mm. so like it was just a natural progression to bring Sinead in as Kathleen you are going to be Kathleen let's do it mm. and she opened up a whole world into it because she was more in tune with me I suppose and in tune with what I was trying to do so like you know you have her to say something to give me that extra few milliseconds to think of something else because obviously you don't want it to be too sketched out like mm. so we always try and keep it just Raw. Sometimes, like I'll say to Sinead, we'll do an old-fashioned one, just rant, you know. <laughs> you know, because you you never want it to be too formulaic and too sketched and too rehearsed. Yeah. Because it kills it, I think. Yeah. You know, it's me- like it's meant to be a madman's wife filling him, filming him in the middle of Connemara. You know, so like you don't want to take that edge away from it. Yeah. But when you sit in the car now, as you're doing at the moment, and Sinead sits down beside you and turns it on, you've kind of decided right today we're going to talk about this so she knows that you knows that but you know that but there's no you don't have any lines written or anything else like that no no i'd have like i'd have like three kind of things three points that i try and hit in my head going through it yeah or for instance something about donald trump have the thing he said have what michael's reaction to it is and then have Sinead's reaction mm. to it would be and then hit off that yeah so you know what i mean michael would obviously love donald trump yeah, you know, so 
and then Kathleen would be like, well, maybe Michael, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I go, oh, Kathleen, that's what them people, that, that's because you're a liberal or whatever, yeah. you know. So it just kind of bounced back and forth like that. So yeah. Because it actually strikes me, the more I look at them, right, and I know sometimes this is intentional, sometimes this is unintentional. Do you, now that you're, you know, a sort of huge internet sensation comedian, do you go back and look at other comedians? Do you look at how things are structured? Or do you just go, look, it's, this is fucking working, so I'm just going to keep doing what we're doing here? Yeah, it's just, this is fucking working, so let's keep doing it. <laughs> like, I've stopped watching, because we do shows and we do comedy and things like that, I've stopped watching all comedy, because it's like watching work. Yeah. So I don't, like, even, like, I went to see Dara Breen in Baker Street there, like, a year and a half ago, and I was like, it was it was horrible to watch it. Not that he wasn't funny. Yeah. It was just horrible watching a stand-up show, because you're just you know everything that's going on and you mm. kind of know the way he's doing things and building up things and you you can read it even more so than a normal person can so you're kind of like you don't enjoy it as much mm. you know what i mean so yeah it's like that it, thing that people say they say never go and see your sausages being made because once you know what goes into them you're never going to fucking enjoy it again i'm the same i don't watch news anymore because i do so much news video that you're looking at you're going oh you know that establishing shot could have been better and this kind of bullshit you know yeah 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 yeah. but yeah but if you if you look at you know uh, your your celebrity so to speak i mean how many people on average would watch michael and kathleen because you put out almost a video pretty much every day or every second day how many views would you get on each one would you say uh, it depends, like, it, like you can have one that goes mad and gets, like, four or five million views, and you can have one then that, like, to me, flops and you only get, like, 30,000, and you feel really bad because you do get a high off it and you do get a rush with the, the scene it take off, and then when you don't do that, like, I'm very, I'm very fatalistic, so it's like, yeah, it's gone, it's over, it's finished. Yeah, pa pack it up, we're done. <laughs> it's gone. And, and crap and deleting the page this is shit and you know what i mean and you end up you even on, end up blaming the viewers and you go should they watch that other idiot doing his crap and he got half a million views and there was no even punchline <laughs> what am i doing ah! you know so and then you get back and you do one again and you cop the hell on and grow up you know yeah. so but sometimes yeah it, it can vary like i'd say we have half a billion views on facebook overall with all the videos and stuff like that so like that's if it finishes up now that's that's an achievement in itself, you know. So I can't I can't complain. Like, so. But are you one of those guys then who goes up to the door at the nightclub in Galway and goes, "Do you know who I am?" When they won't let you in, like, is your oh, head gone that big? Is it? No, Jesus, no. I don't <laughs> go to like I don't go to pubs. I'm a very anxious. I so I suffer from panic disorder, so I don't I don't like it. I, I like I get panicky when people are certain kind of you know someone wants to get a picture with you. But you're saying to them in your mind, just come over to the car, just come over to the car and ask for it. Mm. Don't be hanging around like, that's him, and we go over. And you're just like, please, please, just please come over and ask. So, yeah, I wouldn't be that type of person. I'd be I'd be mortified like if I if I ever caught myself doing that. Like, do you know who I am? I'm your man that does the... Yeah. It's just like, no, shut up. But, but do you find Sinead, it... Sinead, Sinead slap me in the face anyway. So. <laughs> But do you find it difficult out on the street, Steve? Oh, because, like, you know, with the, so the hair and the beard and, and the tattoos and that kind of thing, you're a very recognizable individual. Of course, I'm sure people in Galway would know, you know, if you're out on crutches in a wheelchair, that kind of thing. Do you find it difficult? Is it that sort of standoffish thing? Go, is that your man? Is that the hardest part? Or do you find people coming up to you and asking you things? Do you find that difficult as well? No, I like, I like that. I like when people, like, will to me. Like, the hardest part, I suppose, is when people say smart ass things or kind of vocally attack you and stuff like that that's kind of that can be hard enough because to think it, you're thinking in the back of your head like oh, why would you do that like i'm not I'm not exactly doing anything horrible or anything you know what i mean mm. whatever if you don't like the character or or the whole perception that you know people would watch the video and go this fella's an idiot yeah and i'd well yeah michael is an idiot that's the point don't forget that I'm, like, I'm an actor like if I was playing, if I was a well-known Hollywood superstar and I was playing Michael in a in a film, they'd probably go, "Geez, you don't have a great at playing that character." <laughs> when you do it online and you're a comedian, people, the line is blurred between self and the character. Yeah. So that's I kind of find that annoying. But you find yourself doing that as well at home. Like I remember years ago, I'd be watching whatever comedian, you'd be like, "Oh, he'd be great crack." Yeah. And you're thinking. No, and people always go like, oh, I'd love to go drink with Michael, and I'd be like, no, <laughs> Michael doesn't drink anymore for very good reasons. Well, Stephen doesn't drink before anymore for very good reasons. You would not like to go drink with him, trust me. So it's kind of, 
they just I suppose they just think you're always like that and you're always on yeah. and you're always willing to be you know going around doing Michael 24 yeah. 7 it's like no you get sick of doing it after a while and you get sick of when people come over will you do a video for me and you kind of like you don't mind selfies and things but you know to put on a, a personalised show yeah I'll do I like I no problem doing videos people put up oh my son loves your videos he's sick and I'm like give me the phone you know yeah. what I mean or whatever and things like that but it can get it's it's drunk people mostly it's drunk students yeah. to be brutally honest well they, 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 they are indeed the lowest form of life let's be honest you know but um, it, yeah 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 students yeah I, I, look I study so I know all about I know all about these people I am one of them <laughs> no, I just found it very interesting like, I think there is a peculiar Irish thing in what you're saying though because I remember many years ago there's a brilliant musician who plays in the Temple Bar pubs a lad called Gavin Carpenter right and Gavin has the fortune or misfortune to look like two people he looks like uh, Robbie Williams and Ewan McGregor at a train spot so a couple of lads started a Robbie Williams tribute band and he was playing in some pub down the country and they were getting whatever, a thousand euros a gig or whatever and the woman who owned the pub walked in and went that's not Robbie Williams and the lads were going, well of course it's not Robbie Williams you're not going to get Robbie Williams in a pub in Mullingar for a grand kind of thing you know. So, so, but on that very subject because you started um, touring and you've been, obviously you've toured in the UK and that kind of thing, what's the stage yeah. show that you do like, you know, um, how do yourself and Sinead manage to put it together, is it basically Michael for an hour and a half kind of thing or how does that work out for you, how is it produced Well we have a sport act obviously and an MC so it depends we, uh, Like some, sometimes you'll be on stage for like well over an hour and a half and you'd be thinking like, geez that was very short and Sinead would be like, no that was like an hour and 40 minutes or something and you'd be like, was it? Other times, it, I suppose it depends on the crowd and depends what kind of feedback you're getting from the crowd but it's basically the two of us in an armchair Sinead is like fake interviewing me about current topics and stuff and obviously when we first started doing it we wanted it all new and novel but a lot of people started shouting up do the blah 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 one so we've had to include some of the like classic sketches into it because people it's always like play that song yeah. play it. you know, <laughs> the greatest you know, it. So, and there's a bit of a bit of crowd interaction action a bit of music a few of the songs and things like that are thrown in for good measure so but it's going well like in the uk it's been phenomenal it's been way bigger in the uk than it's been in ireland like does, does that surprise so, you steve does it uh kind of in the beginning it was smaller because it was a lot of irish people mm. expats and things but now it's like 95% like native English people coming. So that's kind of cool. And in Liverpool, it's just, it's it's incredible. It's just astounding. <laughs> like the first time we went over, we done St. George's Hall. It holds like 550 people or something like that. We done like five shows and sold them out. And it was just like, we hadn't even done a show and we come out to 550 people in our first gig and we get a standing ovation and Sinead starts crying. And it's like, I'm thinking in the back of my head, like, yeah, this is very nice, but if we fuck this up, <laughs> talk about the pressure being on us now, you know what I mean? And there was a lot of, like, you know, drunk people that had came from, like, an Everton match, and it was like, they're not going to, like, hold back, you know what I mean? Yeah, they let you and have Liverpool, Liverpool people are known for their, like, oh, we give them a free ticket because we like them as people. Yeah. It's like, we like you as people, but you better be fucking funny too. <laughs> you better entertain us. But for somebody like, yeah, for yeah. Somebody like yourself, you've spoken uh, sort of on the record before about suffering with depression and suffering with anxiety and that kind of thing. I cannot think of anything worse than sitting up in front of 500 scousers and being anxious about trying to be funny. How do you handle that? Like, Because it just seems very, very odd altogether. I suppose the way I explain it is, I, I may only do that for I may only experience that anxiety for maybe at most eight hours say during that day and during the show mm. say once every two weeks or once every month if I wasn't doing this I could be working in Centra experiencing that type of panic for eight hours a day every day yeah that's right like because it doesn't matter what I'd be doing I'd be still experiencing the same form of panic and the same amount of panic so it doesn't really matter that I'm up on a stage or whatever, or I'm working in Supermax or I'm being a mechanic. Mm. I'd still experience that panic. I'd still have that thing. And it's like panic disorder is very different from like random kind of, you know, from panic attacks in a way that I can't, I can't close in on why I feel panicky. I could be panicky in front of a big crowd or I could be watching a documentary at home at half two in the morning and have a massive panic attack. Mm. So there's no, there's not like it. 
it'd, it'd be easy if it was just social anxiety because I could just hide away, which I probably would. I know that's given into it and feeding it, but I probably just would hide away more. Mm. So I suppose there's, there's that kind of catch where you it can come out of no place. It can be just so random and so weird. Mm. So. And there's no sort of CBT thing there where they say to you, oh, look at, you know, think think nice things or go to your happy place or none of that sort of bullshit would work for you, would it? I'm kind of, I'm getting better with dealing with it. And I like, I don't know, like I haven't been doing anything different. Hmm. I think I'm just maybe maturing as a person and maybe not maturing as a person because that suggests people that have it as immature. Hmm. But I'm kind of just maybe, I suppose I'm just, accepting it a bit more that that's that's the way i am and i think once you accept it a bit more it all it almost like goes away which is the irony of the whole thing so i'm just learning, i think i'm learning to deal with it a bit more when i go when we go to the uk i'm my anxiety levels are really up here yeah. like all the time sometimes i might be able to leave the the hotel room or the airbnb bedroom like i'd have to stay like people that would be coming visiting me like we had uh, speedo make he done the big huge thing walk like he had to come into the bedroom with me because I couldn't go out to the kitchen yeah. to chat with him yeah. so it can be it can be crap that way and you know I suppose it's the fear of the fear itself you're you're always waiting for that big huge panic attack that absolutely nearly kills you the last time mm. and you're all you're always kind of accepting in your head that it will happen and it's how you will react to it because the last time that happened, I was agoraphobic and couldn't leave my house for like two or three weeks. Mm. So, you know, and that was very hard to overcome. I had to, kept having to push myself a little few feet each time. And I, the first morning I got into the car, it took me five and a half hours before I managed to start the car and drive away. Mm. So that was kind of, and that was just sheer, sheer catastrophization. And like, 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 like they're not even for nothing and it's your own body like don't get me wrong like the fight and flight response is a brilliant evolutionary adap adaption mm. like it's a brilliant system but when it backfires and you're you're creating it then you're in a whole world of bollocks you know what i mean so, <laughs> would you have your own partner you know when you see the line and your body kicks in and the adrenaline flows and you run away but i suppose i've the added thing then that i can't literally run away mm. so when i'm in some place at a fast food thing or whatever I know I can't run to my car. It's going to, I have to get up the crutches and be really slow. And yeah. then when I get panic attacks, I get very shaky. So my legs aren't very strong. So sometimes if it's very, very shaky, I won't be able to walk. So I have the extra element of being trapped. I'm literally trapped. Someone will have to lift me to my car. Mm. Or that Sinead will have to run down and get the wheelchair, which causes more, which obviously causes more trauma because it makes the attack that bit more attacking yeah you know so and then she, she's kind of out of the picture for a few minutes and you lose that kind of thing you know but does the yeah yeah you're abandoned kind of in your own head you're in the middle of town freaking out and no one's and then someone will come up for a picture you know? <laughs> there you go. Ah, yeah. you have to be very civil and like pose for the picture while you oh nice old day michael and you're like yes i am dying i am literally dying. <laughs> yeah. i'm going to die i'm suffocating you know so. but of course you can have yourself be but does the does the success help at all steve -o? because you were saying there about maturity or immaturity or whatever that might be, but you can look back on these, you know, sort of half a billion YouTube videos and you can say, these people find me funny. Does that kind of help when you say, well, you know, at least I'm successful in this? Uh, I don't know. Like, you kind of... Like, I am very proud of our achievements and proud of the amount of views I, I got and things like that. You get a lot of messages, people, you know, oh, you're a genius and you're the best at what you do and all that. And I'm always in the back of my head, like, no, I'm not the best at what I Like, I would never consider myself, I consider myself all right at it, but I would never consider myself the best or better. Because if you already consider yourself the best, then how are you going to get better or how are you going to be the best? Like, if you're already in your mindset the best, then you've completed everything and you might as well stop and, you know, you know, so like, there's always something to learn, and there's always like, like we, we haven't even gone down the stage where we've done proper Farmer Michael and Kathleen sketches where they're properly filmed and stuff in a kind of a sitcom like esque setting or whatever. So like, the scope there for everything, and like Farmer Michael then was the character I wasn't even the fondest of out of all my characters. Like I've loads more, but James, uh, uh, Michael kind of took off, and he like. Now I'm typecast into Michael. Even when I talk in my normal voice, people hear Michael in it. Because I suppose the the 
the Michael nowadays sounds more like me mm. than the air Michael would have. So people kind of like if I if I scream down the road, you know, but you get me a tea as well. <laughs> people are laughing. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm not performing right now. I'm not performing. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know. It's weird. But has there ever been any interest from sort of you know from TV, from Channel Four, from other than TGTR? Because uh, are you an Irish speaker, by the way? No, no, Sinead is fluent. Okay, brilliant. But has there ever been anybody who's come to you and say, you know, like, I don't know, fucking Night Hawks or whatever, I don't watch TV, I only ever watch sport, like, you know, but nobody's ever said to you, you know, will we put Michael and Kathleen into this and see if we can make, you know, I'm not going to say Mrs. Brown's boys because I don't want to insult you, but there you go. King kind of fizzled out. What was that? The Republic of Telly kind of fizzled out. Yeah. And we were kind of getting big. And that died a horrible death. I watched one or two of the last episodes and I was like, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> you do get pissed off now and again. You know, when you see, like, you know, we're doing, say, a 20-leg Irish tour and you get to get on one or two radio stations. Well-known comedian X is doing one Vicar Street show or he's doing a place in Wexford and he's on all of the well-known radio stations. He's on the Late Late Show. He's on every other like show and you're like you're kind of like what do we have to do mm. and obviously then you realize like ah, uh, their their manager or producer is blah 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 because there's other people that do videos as well and i was always wondering why they were on the late late show like three times and we never got the opportunity mm. and then i realized they're the producer of their podcast is the head producer of the late late show yeah. so then you're like ah i got all nepotism alive and well in Ireland. so mm. if you're not with lisa richards agency or whatever you're basically go away yeah because they'll go straight to them and go who do you have to come on to do a bit of comedy on friday night or whatever and they'll send over their man so yeah. when you're when you're doing it on your own you kind of you have to fight tooth and nail for absolutely every bit of like tv or whatever like the, the most of it what we've got is because we they like our stuff or have contacted us first mm. because you almost feel at this stage i'm not contacting anyone because you give them the power then to ignore you with saying no yeah and that hurts you. like it literally hurts you and someone goes like no we'd rather not have you on the show and it's kind of like oh but you didn't mind sharing my videos that time and playing them on the radio and everything but you won't even have us on mm. you know what i mean it's, it's kind of a kick in the teeth and you're kind of like geez we haven't done to like even there like i think it was two years ago there was like I don't know, some TV show, and it was like the top 10 viral Irish viral hits of whatever, 2018 or 2017. Mm. And we had the Fuck the Mayweathers one, which had, I think, a combined 20 million. And it wasn't even in it. It's nuts, like, you know. It wasn't even mentioned. It, it like, had 15 million more views than the, the winner. Yeah. And it wasn't even mentioned. And we were kind of like, I know it's a small thing, but you're kind of like, Ah, come on! Like, did you like? You're, you're obviously blaming the researcher for not fucking. But then again, there's some people that hate what we do and they think it's very uh, kind of toilet esque, semi racist kind of things. But they're kind of they're overlooking the fact that you're you're playing a parody character and there's a lot of satire in it as well. Don't get me wrong; some of them aren't satirical, some of them are it's just kind of toilet humor and crap like that, or the old annoy the wife kind of thing. But like, you know. That's, that's that's what, what we do, and that's like, like people, people are going like it's so easy to do. There's nothing to it, and you're like, well, you do you you do the same sketch as we do, just with one setting in a car, yeah, and keep it fresh for five years with just a camera on one person at a window, yeah. And if you can do that, and people watching for five years, then then I'll I'll pass the mantle over to you. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's it's amazing because it is such an iconic thing now. Because you know the moment you answered Skype to me when we were talking today, right? I looked at the the, the reddish leather seats there behind it. I kind of I was going right. That's that's it. That's this is it. This is the internet. This is the things that I see popping up in the feed every day. You know. But the fact that your story is as it is, you know, because of the accident that you had and bouncing back from it, that kind of thing. I I, I, can't, I just can't get the my head around the idea that you know people can't find this interesting. I'd have you fucking host on the late late show with that story. You know. But does I know. We always kind of, we always kind of think of that sometimes, you know, we have like self and Sinead, we have a, an incredible backstory about our lives and stuff. And Sinead, a horse fell in her and she like ripped out all her ligaments and her knees and everything. So like, we have a crazy story and it's like, so it's not like you're just going on talking about the videos and plugging a show. We could talk about, we could talk about our mental health hmm. or we could talk about our mental backstories. Yeah. So there's loads there, but it's just, 
they, I don't know, they don't seem to want us. So you kind of just have to, you know, think to yourself then. It's like you'd see me on Twitter. We'll be doing English shows and I'd be there. Is anyone out there that, you know, know anyone on the radio in in some part of the UK or whatever? And we'd have people from the BBC contacting us. You'd never have that nerd. Yeah. You would even tap them in and call them out and you'd be ignored or blocked. You know what I mean? So like, we were on like the biggest radio stations in Liverpool. We were on BBC Merseyside. We were on in the Echo newspaper. We were in, you know, we were in all these like major publications just because we were going over and they wanted, they were interested in our story and talking to us. Yeah. Like you would never have that in Ireland, unfortunately. But so you have to, you, like if Ireland's ignoring you, you have to aim bigger and well, we'll go over and conquer the UK and we'll get, a, we'll get on BBC before we get on RT. Yeah. And then when they eventually come knocking, you can legitimately, and as I, as you know me, if you ever see my tweets, I would legitimately go, no, you can go fuck yourselves. Thank you. Yeah. You, you went there when I asked you first and that kind of thing. And, you know, there's, a, there's kind of, there's a lot to that as well. I find that as a journalist, you have to ask, you know, maybe 10 people for an interview before you get one, right? And it happens a lot with sports stars. And what they don't tend to realize is that their time at the top is very limited. And very, very soon, yeah. they're going to be working alongside uh, Steve-O and Phil at the, the center of whatever that happens to be and that kind of thing. You know? But again, yeah. but, and then the other thing is that Ireland is sort of relatively small. I know it's sort of, sort of a big market for you, but now that you've gone sort of beyond that on YouTube and that kind of thing, but what, what does the, actually, one question I have to ask you is, how did yourself and Sinead meet? Was it this, you know, horses falling on you and uh, car accidents, that kind of thing that brought you to or what was it? No, I basically one night I put up on Facebook that anyone out there uh, up to going for a coffee, and that was it. That is the most so, yeah. modern love story I've ever heard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, it was a mutual friend and uh, uh, Rachel, and Rachel messaged Sinead and said, like, there you go, because she must have fancied me. I don't know why the fuck she did, but she must have fancied me. And then, like, we didn't meet that night, but we met, like, two or three nights later, and then we kind of met up again, and so that kind of that that was that was the the start of it, yeah. and the start of the pain for her, and the start of the glory. The, the start. To start of the glory years, uh, how, what was her relationship to acting or or media or comedy or that kind of thing? Was she did she just get dragged into it by you? Did she? Yeah, <laughs> no, unfortunately, sometimes I regret it, but sometimes like I don't because it kind of gave her a different. It gave her a lot of confidence, but at the same time, it it left her open to constant like online harassment and bullying because like I, I i don't think i've ever been targeted because of my looks and what i do it's always yeah. what i say yeah if Sinead is in the video bang 99 out of 100 of them comments will be about how they look yeah how she look mm. and that's just the nature of it when you're a woman on the internet i think and when you're a woman in the public eye anyway yeah but like she's working in a pet store she's a complete like She's an animal lover, like extraordinaire. You know, she's like basically like she talks and walks with the animals. So like, but so yeah, she's uh, she she enjoys it, but there's certain sides she doesn't enjoy either because she she kind of wouldn't be panicky before a show, but she get more panicky afterwards. Mm. The meet and greets and stuff. Whereas I'm I'm pure relaxed after the show because it's done, it's finished. Yeah. Not- it's kind of oh, me. It's but she gets kind of afraid around people and stuff. So we're both we're both as fucked up as each other, mm. unfortunately. But, but do you know what's refreshing, Steve? Is the fact that you're happy enough to say that. You know, you're happy enough to say that this makes me uncomfortable or I don't like that. And she's the same, you know, because there over the weekend, I think she got a little bit of stick for her singing and that kind of thing. And I found it horrendous. And I know a lot. I work a lot with women's sport, and I find a lot of female athletes will sometimes go, you know what? I'd love to talk to you, but I can't because I just don't have the fucking mental bandwidth to deal with the shite I'm going to get for this now as she goes along, you know? But is it possible? Terrible. Yeah, it's awful. But is it possible for you, uh, you know, I mean, half a billion views online and that kind of thing, is it possible for you to sort of make a living out of that kind of thing? Or is it like Spotify where you're the most popular man in the world and yet it doesn't sort of generate any income? Yeah. Sort of it's like a lot of our videos on YouTube would be demonetized, so... Because you'll mention a certain key term or because of the language in it or you'll get an email like two days later saying this video is demonetized. So like, I think I read someplace you'd have to have a million subscribers, all your videos monetized and have the maximum amount of people in your subscriber list watching your videos daily to reach the average industrial US wage. Fuck me. So, so people like... And people think as well, like they're under this uh, like illusion that you get paid by Facebook as well, and you're like, no. And they're but you're not like I think it's like ten euros per thousand views, and like you're there. No, you make nothing from that. Make damn all from YouTube. So it's basically the live shows. 
which are all cancelled now. So mm. we're kind of we're tits up now at the moment, but that's that's it's the life we chose, and there's not much you can do about it. I'd feel a lot worse if someone got sick at one of our shows or something. So. Mm. Yeah, I was at a press conference yesterday with the Swedish Olympic Committee, and that was the last thing that I had in my calendar. The tipexing is now complete, so you know, nine months of, yeah, of work yeah, is now yeah. wiped out. You know, but um, yeah. what are you going to do when all this is over? When this whole COVID nineteen thing is over, are you going to rebook your tours and get back out on the road again, or what's the plan? Uh, well, they're all been like they haven't been like they haven't can't, well they've been postponed. Like so, hopefully, we'll know a bit. We'll know a bit more and whatever when we when we hit the peak and it starts to go down when it'll be rescheduled and try and get and hopefully like we understand that a lot of people won't be able to hold out and go like you know we'll hold on to our tickets for the, post, the rescheduled one a lot of people will just get their money back because times are hard you know what i mean but hopefully then we'll come out of this and people will want to laugh and will like you know buy the tickets again or come and see us and have a, a laugh we hope it won't affect it too much because obviously as i said this is our the live shows are our our bread and butter and that's how we make a living and you know people were out about me to do a patreon so i opened up a patreon and i think we got like we're up to 40 dollars a month so like living a large man living a large yeah, yeah. but you can't... It's, kind of, it's kind of weird as well though in a way people will go like you'll put it up on youtube or twitter and people will go oh what's the other fella begging and it's like you like you watch all our videos you wouldn't come to live shows but you wouldn't even help support what we do yeah and we do it for free every day, all the time, you know, and it's kind of, like, if I was following a person and they said that, I'd be like, oh, fuck, most definitely, even a dollar or whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, it was like, I, I, I started to patch in a while ago, and there was like $2 and $5 and $10, and now I'm getting rid of all the $10 and $5. Everything is free on it, like, you don't have to log in, so you just, you know, pay your $2 if you can, that's fine, right? So, and I was thinking, yeah. if you can get enough people to do it, but I would have thought, somebody with the reach that you have and the, sort of the joy you bring people, I can understand if nobody ever goes in. And does it with me, but with somebody with your reach, I would have expected, you know, I wouldn't be scared of it either, my friend. I would be happy enough, you know, just lift it and tell people because, you know, sometimes the easiest way to get what you want is, is to ask for it. And what I want to know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What, like a lot of people would have at the end of their videos, you know, on YouTube or whatever. Hey, guys, we're on Patreon. Please support, blah, blah, blah. And, yeah. you know, we never really. We do a video where we ask people to subscribe. We'd never do the thing at the end where, hey, guys, I hope you enjoy the sketches. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button because we don't want to be the American-esque kind of YouTubers. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like, but you feel guilty as well asking for it at the same time because then people go, why don't you sell your car? And I go, well, I'm currently uh, pondering that because of this. Mm. But thank you. <laughs> but like, I, like, I've worked really, really hard. Like any profit we've made in shows, like I... Sinead was spending away and shopping and stuff. I was saving and saving and saving to get this car. So, and plus, I can't walk. So my car is like my office, my home. It's like I'm I'm very dear to cars. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. I love my. I kind of I want to be. It's comfortable and I like it. And plus, it's it's kind of it's semi show PC as well because like Farmer Michael pulling up in the big fucking over the top beamer. You know, so it's kind of it's part it's of the part character. Of, yeah, but the other thing is like you know. Don't I wouldn't be fucking ashamed of it either. You know, if I had a half a million, a half a billion hits on YouTube and Facebook and that kind of thing, you deserve the success. You deserve to make a few bob. You deserve to sell your tickets and you deserve to have your nice car. And frankly, fuck the people who will tell you any different. You know, but just before I let you go, because I'm sure that tea is probably going cold and you won't be able to get another one. Oh, no, it's good. <laughs> it's, all... it's my second one. I'm on my second one. Actually, well, no, that, that I would be against. That's just being flahulok for no reason. You know, but <laughs> tell me, is there any plans? People like, criticize me on this now. Look at uh, stockpiling tea while people are. Still... <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? Well, tell me, are there any plans to debut any of the, the other characters? Because you're saying you have plenty of other characters there that you actually like and that you think might be funnier. Are you, have you any plans? Well, we're all going to go back far enough. Like, we've done the, 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 rich, the wanker Dublin rugby crowd. And, like, that, we've done one or two videos of that. And I remember doing one rugby video then as Michael. And, like, I had an email from, like, the official Rugby World Cup. And they were like, we'd love you to do some... Uh, uh, recaps for our official channel of the Rugby World Cup and I was like <laughs> yes <laughs> yes because yes, I remember at the time a lot of comedians in Ireland were doing like uh, little rugby sketches for off the ball and I was there to Sinead we weren't asked yeah and I felt pissed off and then all of a sudden we're doing them for the real thing so it was like fuck you <laughs> so yeah. was but, that uh, yeah I have the, like we have like, there's some of them there. Like, I have James Bernard, the kind of a, 
the pure little scumbaggy fella that goes around macing people and robbing people. I have him, like he's, there's loads of sketches of him up there and things, but I suppose it's, and Mark Jones, the conspiracy theorist fella, I have a lot of him as well. And But I, I suppose Michael just, he, he blows them out of the water and fart, and that's, you know, without him would I be known anyway, so you have to you have to thank him for that. But, but, but do you like him? Do you like who Michael is, Steve? Yeah, because he is he's a horrible human being, but he is so ignorantly so. Yeah. Like he's he's the stereotypical Irish person that like he's so ignorant of these things, but if you educated him about him he'd he'd be more open to it. Yeah. Like he's not he's not badly you know, or inherently badly like homophobic or racist. He's just He's just ignorant. Yeah. He's so he's, he's so he's so ignorant. He doesn't even know how ignorant he is, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Like the one I done about the gays have a special duct in their hand, and that's how they make love. You know, he's <laughs> he's just like the surrealism of Michael's ignorance, like knows no bounds. You know, so. <laughs> and and on that note, long may it continue with Michael and yourself and Sinead and every success to you, Steve, oh my friend. And I hope that uh, the tea uh, shop at Supermax there. Actually, if I were you, I'd be nipping down to Pat now and asking him for a few bob because a few hundred people will see this as well. And they might start frequenting him when he starts yeah, opening yeah, again. I, you know, get him to send you the check. Supermax, give me money. <laughs> so, yeah, as I say, sometimes the easiest way to get what you want is to ask for it. Listen, thanks so yeah. much for talking to me today, and uh, every success Thank in the future. You. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it.